so you walk into the Olive Garden one day to have some lovely braised beef tortelloni, which for the record is just about the only good thing they serve over there. You sit back and you indulge. You scarf it down. Most delicious meal ever committed to the labyrinthine depths of your colon. It was so good you order it again. You figure, eh, well, it took about 20 minutes for the first dish to arrive. I imagine it'll take about another 20. And before you can even finish the thought, here comes the waitress again with a silver platter. But the platter's empty. Confused, you start to ask what's going on. When out of nowhere, she plops the empty tray on the counter, she squats, and before long, you've got a beautiful silver platter with a fresh steaming turd coiled like a fecal cobra in the center of the table. She turns to you and she says, that'll be 60 bucks, please. And you say, oh, fuck no. Not only did you not give me braised beef tortelloni like I asked, you just pinched a fucking turd on my table. This is bullshit. She replies, why don't you shut up and stop complaining? You wanted another meal, and here it fucking is. Either pay up or get the hell out. That's when the other customers start shouting at you. Yeah, you fuck, pay up. That meal looks delicious. Why are you fucking complaining? You're just a whiny asshole. That's what it's like to be a Dragon Age fan right now. This series went from being the single most impressive RPG I played in at least half a decade to an abortion I'd like permanently wiped from my memory. I wanted to like this game. It was the sequel to my favorite game of 2009, the sleeper hit Dragon Age Origins. But it seems at every turn, Bioware went out of their way to alienate and insult myself and the entire extremely dedicated community that was built subsequent to the release of the first game. In short, they took the spiritual successor to Baldur's Gate, and turned it into Mass Effect with swords. The game opens up with a rather piss-poor Flash cartoon-looking cutscene. Then you walk forward some. Then there's another cutscene. Then you walk forward some more. Oops! Cutscene time again! Ah, time to walk forward again. And if this sounds familiar, it's because it's the exact same apocalyptically linear formula utilized by Square Enix in the utter abomination that is Final Fantasy XIII. Pause and process what I just said to you, but if you own any firearms, make sure they aren't loaded or within reach. Shut the garage door, turn your vehicle on, wrap your mouth firmly around this figurative tailpipe and rev the fucking engine as I repeat unequivocally the following statement. Dragon Age 2 is like Final Fantasy XIII. And the constrictive sense of staggering linearity is in no way alleviated by the new real-time map in the upper right-hand corner that essentially functions as a bright flashing beacon repeatedly shrieking the words, Look at me! Look how linear and similar to Final Fantasy XIII I am! Bet you wish you had that 60 bucks back, you fucking moron! It's ours now! We can use it to pay for more pants-shittingly retarded Your Mom Hates Dead Space 2 advertisements, so choke on that turd, fanboys! I've watched every developer interview, and the impression I've formed is that over the course of development, Bioware became so insular and high on their own ideas that they completely lost sight of what drew gamers to the series in the first place. Over the course of Dragon Age 2, they struggle so valiantly to impress us with their overhauled combat and dumbed-down dialogue wheel that somewhere along the line they actually convinced themselves that omitting things like the ability to single-wield weapons with a rogue character or switch out your teammate's armor would be completely forgiven. I've said it before, but I'll likely repeat it another hundred times before we hit the next video game crash. But when it comes to sequels, which now comprise the majority of video games, when a developer finds themselves removing things rather than adding them, the red flag should pop right the fuck up, and they should head back to the drawing board. You wouldn't have bought issue number two of Spider-Man if Stan Lee had arbitrarily removed Aunt May or J. Jonah Jameson from the equation. Stop removing shit that isn't broken. Dragon Age Origins was the surprise hit of 2009. This was a winning formula. Add some nice new things to the series. Don't take out the ability to have random conversations with NPCs or even to talk to your own goddamn teammates. Knights of the Old Republic, released over eight fucking years ago, allowed me to talk with my teammates. And yet every Bioware game since has appeared more and more eager to remove this basic and I feel crucial feature from the table completely. Graphically, the series has never been renowned for its aesthetic flair, but I'll say it once and move right the fuck on because we have a whole lot of shitty game to get through here. So I'll let Miss One from the Motown classic The Wiz describe this game's art style for me. This chick put the ugh in ugly. <laughs> The game is rife with blurry textures, glassy-eyed mannequin-like characters, and wonky animations. Each act is punctuated with a badly animated, completely meaningless Flash cartoon, and look, I have no problem with simply moving objects on a static background. The Thief series did that style of cutscene, and it did it well. But Dragon Age 2's cinematics make Assy McGee look like a gleaming paragon of animated quality. 
In short, for a game that's heralded as a huge step forward in terms of the series' presentation, it certainly does a decent impression of a titanic step backward. The character designs are overdone and uninspired. The moment I saw Flemeth had gone from a doddering old woman to a hot milf with hair antlers, I just about threw my controller through the fucking screen. I get she can shapeshift, but... How's about not shapeshifting into the slutbag sorceress from Final Fantasy VIII? And while we're on the subject of tired cliches, let's discuss the protagonist's name for a spell, shall we? Let's get down to brass tacks here. When it comes to vile, uncreative, nauseatingly derivative names, Hawk the Red-Eyed Renegade, perpetually equipped with a bad one-liner for every equation, makes Jet Brody from Fracture look positively fucking inspired. And the fucking combat! This was your ace in the hole, Bioware? Tapping the attack button until your thumb is immobilized by arthritic necrosis? And no, your sad World of Warcraft hotkeys don't mean your combat system has depth, you misguided fucking morons. There are positive additions here, believe it or not, but they're buried beneath the excusable omissions and needless... <clears throat> streamlining. A good example of this is the ability to send your individual party members to specific locations at will. It's basically pointless, but it does save you a bit of time in a pinch. So way to add at least one decent thing, Bioware. Well, that's one in a row for you, Wild Bill. The most egregious affront in terms of omissions has got to be the complete removal of the ability to speak to your party members whenever you wish. And it's not simply because I personally enjoy exploring the backgrounds and beliefs of the companions I pick up along the way, but because the easiest way for the game player to connect with a fantasy environment is to speak at length with someone from that world. What Bioware has done by removing this core design pillar is put up a wall between the player and the world, making Dragon Age 2's plot feel completely unrelatable and unmotivated. I think it was about six hours into the game and it already picked up my first three party members when it suddenly dawned on me. I don't give a shit about these characters. If fire rained from the sky and set these quiescent cardboard fuckers ablaze, I'd light a cigarette with the resultant inferno and dance the fucking lambada on their smoldering corpses. These characters are my gateway to the world of Hawk, Kirkwall, and the Free Marches, and every time they open their mouth, I want to tear their mandible off with my bare fucking hands. The NPCs are set dressing. If you see humans or elves standing around in large groups, not only can you not speak to them, you can't even focus your cursor on them. They they may as well be a goddamn pillar. The only time you can speak to anyone is when a bright, shiny yellow arrow points at their head as if to say, hey, you, complete and utter retard whose hand we're holding through this entire fucking game despite your repeated protestations and calls for help. Click here to progress the story, shithead, and don't even get me started on that FUCKING ENDING! Remember, at the conclusion of Dragon Age Origins, how every plot detail was wrapped up neatly, and those that weren't were given a nice post-roll to explain what eventually happened to those locations and characters? Remember the innate feeling of satisfaction that gave you as a player? Well, with Dragon Age 2, they could have crashed a 747 into your living room with the words BY DRAGON AGE 3 painted in neon green on the fucking fuselage, and it still would have felt like a less blatant attempt to get me to buy the next game than ending Dragon Age 2 in a derivative, obligatory cliffhanger. Perhaps more bothersome than any of these grievances is the fact that not one so-called professional review site seems capable of voicing them. A quick glance at the front page for GameFailers.com, and it's immediately clear why, in the grander macrocosm of utter fatuous idiocy, swilling the Viacom Kool-Aid by actually trusting these disingenuous whores rests somewhere below purchasing a PSP Go. Why in merry fuck would you trust a Dragon Age 2 review posted on a site that's all but wallpapered with Dragon Age 2 ads exactly? and those same reviewers defend their profligate behavior by saying that while Dragon Age 2 isn't as good as Origins, it's still a good game. Well, if Dragon Age 2 isn't a bad game, then what the fuck is? I would define a bad game as any game that fails to attain what it strives for. Dragon Age 2 strives to be both RPG and hack and slash, and doesn't do either particularly well as a result. So yes, it's a fucking bad game! Stop crouching like an intellectual infant behind badly written doublespeak when the sum and substance of it is that you're being paid to give a shitty game a good score. I hate. Repeat. Fucking. I HATE THIS FUCKING GAME! I hesitate to even call it a game. It's a walking forward and talking simulator with multiple endings. Don't buy it, don't rent it, don't allow it to enter your thoughts. It's not as bad as Final Fantasy XIII. It's fucking worse! For one simple reason! It's Bioware, and they should know better. I'm Razor Fist. God. Fucking speed!